going to have a look at a couple of different types of printing. We're going to be looking at block printing, creating our own stamps, and we're going to be looking at lino printing using styrofoam. So first off, we'll start with block printing. Here's an example of a piece that I made earlier. Uh, for this, I've actually used cardboard that I found in a packet, so I've been having a few deliveries recently. You can see it's just the box from a packet, and all I've done is I've cut out the different parts of the pattern and assembled them using print stick. So, the first thing you're going to need to do is to create a base for your stamp. Here I've used a rectangular base, but you can use a circular base, and it can be any size that you want. You can create different types of patterns for your stamp. So for instance here, I'm using a tree pattern and it's a single stamp. It's not necessarily a repetitive pattern. Here, I've actually created one that's a repetitive pattern and this uses circles and arches and also a semicircle. Now where the semicircle ends, that's where I start the next stamp. So for instance here, I've created a piece using that pattern. So have a think about your design before you start. So here we've got our base. What I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to create a really simple pattern just using strips of card. I'm just going to cut out a few different size strips. Now if you're wanting a more complicated pattern, it might be worth sketching it out first. Um, I tend to use a pen, just sketch out a few rough ideas on paper or on cardboard first so that I've got something to work with. But if you're going for something really simple, it doesn't really matter. So for this piece, I think I'm just going to layer some pieces like this. So I hope you've all had a chance during lockdown to have a go at it being creative, doing lots of different creative things. If you do create anything, don't forget to share it with Cartwheel Arts. It's fantastic to see what you've been up to. There we go. First piece. Create a piece for down there. You can go quite abstract with this. If you wanted a stamp of something specific, say an animal, you could create a stamp of that specific animal. All you'd need to do is cut the animal out using scissors, place it on there and you've got a stamp. Now block printing has been used for a long time, it's an ancient art form, often it's done using wood, but there's no reason why you can't make your block prints out of anything really. Before you start printing with your block prints, you're going to want to allow a bit of time for it to dry. So you may want to go away, let it dry and then come back to it. So here I'm just creating a bit of a pattern as you can see. I'm trying to keep everything on one level. If you start to layer stuff up, the stuff on the lower layer isn't going to show. So you're going to need to keep everything on one level. I'm just going to use an extra little bit there.
if you don't have Pritt stick, it's not a problem. Any kind of glue that you've got is fine, absolutely fine. So you can see we're starting to create some kind of pattern here. Now block printing can be used on lots of different surfaces. You can use it on, for instance, paper, card, to create patterns and like that. You could use it to make your own wrapping paper even. Or how about trying it on fabric? If you've got some fabric paints lying around, you could always uh, try using it on some fabric. Make your own tote bag or make your own uh, cover for something. Or even make your own clothing if you're feeling adventurous. Be a little bit fiddly sometimes the bits get stuck to your fingers there we go okay so that's the idea so just start building up your pattern add in as much detail as you can once you're happy with your pattern you can start printing so for instance with this piece once it was dry all I did was I used a sponge now a kitchen sponge works great if you've got one in your, under your kitchen sink that you can cut up. Just cut up a little chunk of it. Place a bit of paint onto your card. Here I'm using a mixture of different colours. I'm using a bit of red, a bit of yellow and a little bit of black. But you can use any colours that you like. And then all we're doing is we're just pressing it down, trying to follow your pattern as best as you can. So here I'll just press down and you can see when I lift it off, it's only the bits where I've created a three dimensional texture that actually print. So we'll do another piece. If it doesn't work quite how you want it, just have another go. You can print over the top here I'm going to join these two semicircles to create one larger circle. So I'm going to match it up and I'm just going to press again. And I'm going to lift it off. And you've created a full circle there. And then what I do is I turn it over and I carry on like that. For something slightly more complicated like this, what I'd do is I'd actually use a paintbrush. Uh, so here I'm going to use a paintbrush. So just add the different colours. So I don't actually want this whole thing just to be green. Um, I might put a green underlayer, and I could use a sponge for that if I wanted to. So for instance, I could create a kind of green undertone. What you want to do is do this fairly quickly before the paint dries. Then I can use my paintbrush just to add a few different tones. So here I'm just going to mix a bit of the green and the blue together to make a slightly darker green colour and to add in on some of the leaves. Don't worry if you go onto the back a little bit, that's fine, not a problem. Let's just add a bit more colour to these. Just make sure there's plenty of paint on it before you print. And 
and to add a little bit of yellow to these little dashes in between. Okay, and once you're happy with your colouring, you can just press it down. So just hold it really gently, place it in the middle of your page, and press it down. Then when you lift off, you should be left with a pattern. If you want to, you could do multiple prints. So it's always worth printing quite quickly onto another sheet with the paint that's left over. Let's have a look how that one turns out. So you get a slightly fainter image. So here I've actually got two identical works of art. One with a slightly darker image and one with a slightly lighter image. So that's a basic introduction to block printing. Have a go, have an experiment, see what you can come up with. Be as creative as you can. Now we're going to have a look at basic lino printing. So for that, you're going to need some styrofoam. So here I've just ordered some online, but if you've got pizza bases or anything like that, that works just as well. can easily be cut with scissors. So again, I'm just going to cut down a small size. I don't need the whole thing. So this works actually in the opposite way to the block printing. So whatever you draw onto the piece, that's what's not going to show. So for instance, if I was to draw a bird, I could remove the bird and then I could have the outside showing or I could remove the outside and have the bird showing. So I'll show you here. What you need is a biro or a pencil and you need to just start by sketching really lightly onto your styrofoam like this. Now here what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have the bird showing. So what I need to do is leave the bird risen up and remove the background. So I'm going to use my pen to press in and remove sections of the background all around the outside of my bird. I need to make the outside line of my bird reasonably defined and then I need to remove everything that I don't want to show. You can make this as complicated or as simple as you want really. So here you can see I've removed some of the outside, so only the bits that are still risen will show. You want to press down nice and hard for this bit. There we go. Okay, so that's my basic design. I could add details into it, so I could add kind of dotty patterns into it if I wanted to. I could take out extra sections. Add as much or as little as you like. But the main focus here is my bird. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint my design. So here I'm just using some acrylic paints, but poster paints work just as well. So I'm going to start off by painting my bird, this kind of like nice turquoisey bluey colour. So I'll we'll have a nice turquoise bird. Again, you want to put plenty of paint on this. And then I'm going to use a different colour to do kind of rays of sunshine around the outside. So it'll be kind of sun ray type design. There we go. So we'll just 
put plenty of paint on again. Make sure you cover everything that you want to stamp with. Now you could do the whole thing in one colour if you preferred. Some people really like black and white when it comes to um, lino printing. That can work really well too, so you could use just one colour. Have an experiment, try it in lots of different colours, mixtures of colours, singular colours. See how you feel. Add a little bit more to this bit in the middle. And then once it's fully covered, all you need to do again is to print it. So we're just going to press it down. Make sure you press evenly across the back. You could always use a roller to press it down if you have one of those. And then we're just going to lift it off and you're left with your design. So it's really simple and it's a really simple way to get a repetitive design that you can use again and again and again. Again, this technique could be used on different materials. You could use it on fabric, you can use it on paper, card, anything you want. So just have a go. Try experimenting, making as many different pieces as you can. And don't forget, once you've made your pieces, it's great if you can share it with us. Um, so if you share it with us, try using at Cartwheel Arts and hashtag draw the day. Alternatively, you could email it to us at admin at cartwheelarts.org.uk. All right, thank you. It's been great to see you. Goodbye.